now, live at twitch.tv slash RNG show. It's your weekly dose of gaming news. From Nintendo. To the PC. Along with other nerd culture, like film. And anime. With new perspectives. Every week. Hosted by fans, just like you. Got feedback? Tweet at RNG underscore show, or chat live on Twitch. The RNG Show begins now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Shadow Temple here. We're starting up yet another edition of RNG Show. Welcome all. It's been a crazy E3 thus far, as I'm sure many of you already know. And here we are to talk about all the crazy things that did indeed happen over the past, over the course of the past three days. I, for one, have not been able to get any work done as a result. I kind of feel bad for my employers, but that's beside the point. I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts. Uh, if each of you want to introduce yourselves, maybe with the starting in alphabetical order. Hi guys, I'm Hipster Harbinger. Uh, nice to be with you all. And? I'm Paragia, and I'm here, and yay. He's the Paragia. Yes. Paragia. Anyway. So, yeah. No, it's it's been a, a weird, crazy three days. A lot of new things, a lot of old things, a lot of, a lot of E3. Just a ton Thanks of E3. Thing. Yeah, that too. A lot of whining. Apparently Kanye West is there. Yeah. And, and he I'm cares. Right he cares apparently. I've been I've been seeing tweets about him running around the the show floor and like commenting wait, wait, on wait. on the gaming industry. Kanye cares about more than Kanye. I know it's crazy, right? Well, he was there looking for Kanye games, of course. Yeah, you know, uh, to, to spend there Kanye, are no Kanye coins games, on. I think. Uh, there there might have been a few Kanye games. You, you you don't know. You don't know. Anyway, uh, during this particular <laughs> show, what, what what yeah, no I. Uh, We'll, I'll be playing Hearthstone because A, it's easy to set up, and B, there's a new mode out now called Tavern Brawl, where there's a weekly challenge that you have to kind of encounter while you're facing other people, I think. So that'll be fun. You know what the challenge for this week is? I'm about to find out. What is it? I, I don't know. That's why I was asking. Oh, no, no. I, I don't know either. Let's see here. Two epic bosses of Black, Mount Black Rock Mountain are settling things once and for all. With your help. I, I, I don't know what it means, but okay. Should be fun. Okay. Anyway, well, so yeah, again. Uh, I think I think we should go right into it because we got a lot to to cover today. Yeah. So the plan for the show tonight, folks. Hey, by the way, let me know if you guys can hear the the other two well enough because I want to make sure you know audio balances are fine and everything. I did not check before the stream started, unfortunately. But can we uh, update the date that says that we're recording? Because apparently it's saying that it's one day before. Or when it is. Wow, I don't know it's how I managed to do that. Yeah, today. it is the seventeenth, and I I put the sixteenth for whatever silly reason. It's e three. Like all those days are just going on. They're just rolling into they're, each other. They're they're ending way too late, and then it's already the next day, and it's oh my god. So I felt around by Sunday. I I, I went into you know saw the, the the Nintendo World Championship, the Bethesda conference. Then I went to, or I kept went to back to work and stayed there till about four in the morning. And since then, my entire schedule has been thrown off. God, so yeah. Since since Sunday, it's been sleeping at five a.m. Like I'm European, so all these the last ones are all happening like two, three a.m. So it's been sleeping five to six a.m. before I go to bed, and then waking up in the afternoon, and then already almost time again for. Uh, E3, so it's, yeah, it's been more than crazy. To say the least. Yeah, so now the plan is that we're going to kind of go through just chronological order through these various uh, conferences. We're going to skip the Nintendo World Championship for now. For now. We'll get back to it, don't worry, it'll happen. But we figured it would be easier to just talk about Nintendo as a whole as opposed to trying to say like, Oh yeah, uh, Last Ball was a cool reveal, I guess, and, and not talk about the, <laughs> the Metroid bit afterwards. The, the whole game, I guess. So we're going to start with Bethesda, and... And not uh, Fallout. Bethesda we're not going to start with Fallout. 
We're starting uh, at the start of the Bethesda, so that means doom. 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 You guys, remember that, is... that like seven second long trailer? That they showed like four, five times before the thing started. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Too late, so. And then they actually showed a lot of gameplay and a lot of things. So I like, like it was a bit weird when they did that. But then the show actually started. They showed off a lot of Doom directly yeah. starting that. So they showed a crap ton of Doom. Forgiven. Like so yeah. much Doom. I was surprised at how much Doom there was. Yeah. Like, my only problem that I've seen and I heard from other people as well is that they keep shouting, like, hey, it's a fast pass shooter game, and that the two, three gameplay parts they showed off were really slow. Like, they were talk walking slow, really carefully. It's like, I get that you want to show us the environment you built, but if you say your game is fast paced, show us some parts that the game is fast paced. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. Makes I'd sense. say that it was still pretty fast-paced when it actually got to the action parts of it, but... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, true, but it took a whole long time, uh, pretty long before actual action sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. I hear so, you on that. And, and this is not only the sh parts they showed off at the uh, conference, but parts they showed off during other panels. Mm -hmm. Because about everything is doing their panels now. IGN, Twitch... Everybody's got their own uh, show. Game share. And then, because Nintendo Treehouse was so popular last year, all other, all the companies are doing themselves. Like, you had Xbox Daily, you had PlayStation, it's do Sony doing their own thing every day with interviews and stuff about PlayStation games. So it was, it, it was crazy to keep everything. Like, I, I personally, I stayed at Treehouse because it's what I watched last year, and I still love and I did really enjoy it today, yesterday and today mm -hmm. for that fact, so... But yeah, it was really hard. It, it's becoming harder and harder for people to follow everything because so much going on even after the con Like, at least the conferences, they're nice enough to not overlap each other, but past that, it's just open game and to follow everything is insane. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of news coming out this week and it's been hard to... Keep uh, focus on everything for sure. And like we tomorrow, we have another day, right? Like I believe so. I mean, yeah. it, it, another day of the sh you know the conflicts or the the floor. Yeah, true. But Treehouse is still happening tomorrow, and a lot of other of the um, interview stuff and what I say, the gameplay thing is still happening. So we don't know. Like this morning, actually, in Treehouse, they showed off some stuff that we're not seeing before but we'll talk about that later during the nintendo section right. let's go back to doom where we're started with uh yeah doom it's pretty much still doom like yeah no it's it's very doomy we saw it's 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 still the generic <laughs> the most generic shooter of the generic shooters and to be honest i don't mind that either it's well it's it's uh, it is the first person shooter that's how this whole thing got started was doom and so it's... Of course, but we're not in that point God, anymore. Man. But I think it's it's Blood it's good rain. to have still that one shooter that's just shoot, shooting demons or devils or whatever they are, and that's it. No yeah. skills, no just you and guns. Ridiculous guns sometimes, yes, but you and guns and shoot everything. Mm -hmm. And I know for a lot of people that's not not enough anymore these days, but I think that just having that simple, refreshing uh, Doom experience almost, I think it can still work these days. Yeah, I mean, that's the concern, though, is that it does seem like they're going t towards that, like, classic shooter experience know, where it's man. like, you don't have skills, you basically yeah. have a shotgun or a p uh, machine gun or whatever, but the question is, is that going to be enough to differentiate it from everything else out there because it's like hey i could play this game where i shoot stuff or i could play this other game where i shoot stuff and do something else yeah you know i keep trying well, to defend doom saying it's it, it is the grandfather of them all but it should we buy should we just buy therefore doom out of respect now that i think about <laughs> it just it, it even though I'm, I'm trying to provide respect to doom certainly it does kind of need to it needs to change itself a little bit if it wants to compete with the modern age and although oh, it does what it does very, very well, so far as we've seen, 
that may not be enough for for modern audiences. You know. But uh, that's why that was the next part, of course, uh, going on. on Doom is Doom Snap Map, what is pretty much a uh, map builder for Doom. Like a lot of games, of of course, today are getting a lot of good modding tools, map makers, stuff like that. But it seems like they're really trying to uh, give an, a good tool to be pretty much make game modes whatever, uh, however you want to make them. So. I think that they're really relying to for Doom on the community to actually make game modes. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're, they're kind of put hanging on the idea that you know they're where they'll actually really truly see the the original content is from their from their fans, the content creators themselves, as opposed to uh, some you know contrived setup otherwise. Yeah, guys, can we? You guys are already at Fallout Shower, we're not even dead far in. Dead, please. Honestly though, I, I cannot remember anything between Doom. I, I was trying to go through all the conferences before the show started today, and I was like, yeah, okay, so Bethesda, right? There was definitely Doom, and then fa Fallout? Fa Fallout? Dishonored. Dishonored, we, we, yeah, we Dishonored, Dishonored too, too. God! We had I, a few, let, let's, I was let's excited about it too. It. We, we had um, Doom is Coming Spring 2016 to, clear, to finish that part of right um then they announced Bethesda.net, what is pretty much their online system where all their games are gonna apparently connect through we don't know too much about the uh how it's gonna work like if you if it's gonna be in like origin more or more like uh, other systems like you play what's more integrated to steam as well right uh so, so maybe it's just like an extra layer of an, an extra account on top of stuff for all your Bethesda games, but yeah. Didn't it's... they say something about mods through it too? I can't remember. Like, I think I recall it's... that, but then I'm maybe? kind of like, then you're competing maybe... against Nexus Mods, which also had a competitor with the Steam Workshop. Right. Mm -hmm. and so it was just but a never-ending supply. Of... And maybe they're even going to work with Nexus, but yeah, it's like, mods, like, I've been I've done like uh, Skyrim modding pretty heavily like a few weeks ago actually a few two months ago or something I was really heavily getting into that and you have to get things from everywhere like Nexus is your main but there are always things that are not even not on the Nexus or are just easier to install through um, Steam and then you have modders that only are available on the Nexus or don't want to be on the Nexus and can only be get to Steam Workshop and something's gone is we're from, it has their own website, so modding is always hard with this kind of game. So it's no, yeah, we'll no, I'm never going to be. Not a lot of details were given out about it. Right. So With that, ref refresh my memory. Were they kind of touting this as sort of a setup towards uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like their own kind of digital storefront, or are they acting it like exclusively from the perspective of like these the mods will be coming from out of this and just and. That's the only thing uh, that's doing. It's, it's, it's more there, uh, what I understand more is there it's in, like an in-game overlay kind of thing and an account extra. So, uh, it's pretty unclear if it's actually a storefront or not. Right, that's Slowpoke what I'm kind of trying to figure out. made a comment about how it was going to be, someone was saying that it was going to be closer to Nexus mods and try and mm. unify the mods for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Which that I think kind of makes, makes sense. makes a bit more sense because yeah. uh, kind of skipping forward a little bit, they were talking yeah. about how... Uh, Mods on the for console. Fallout 4 are going to be available for some of their consoles. So... No, and, and what Soaring says, it might be a little bit more like the Rockstar Social Club. Mm -hmm. um, but it would make different. sense that if they're planning on having those uh, mods available for consoles, that they would have to have some kind of thing that they support to uh, be able to get those mods out to everyone. Right. And talking about Best of the Net, the first game that's going to support it is actually... Their shooter MOBA Battle Cry. Yeah, no, uh, that's true. Yeah. I, I almost I, again so that, keep forgetting about it is Battle Cry, right? That that is the one that Bethesda's making. This is making. Battle Cry we're talking about. Because good up God, there's so many. For uh, the beta, and if you sign up today, you will have a bigger chance to get in. Right. I, need, I can't remember if I. Just, 18th, I cannot recall Cry, if I signed up for this or not. Com. Yeah. 
I think it may have been crashing uh, at the time, and I just didn't do it, but I might, because it looks cool. I mean, I, I like the idea of this kind of dystopian future cool. where, uh... I'll link that. I think the gist of Battle Cry is that, like, they're all, like, world nations have one agreed never to build w guns again, for some reason. And then, uh, two to resolve all their differences with these the, these fights between uh, these different mercenaries. And like, each mercenary repre represents a different nation. So that's kind of cool. I, yeah. I, can get, I can get behind it's, that. It's interesting, but it's, it's it, I think it's a little bit MOBA kind, shooter kind, it's yeah. just so many games like this. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's gonna get oversaturated very, very happen. quickly, yes. So it's gonna be interesting which one will survive longer, which one are really gonna get. Like I, I, I honestly think there's gonna be probably a following at some point for every single one. But what are the big ones we're gonna see? What are the smaller ones? What are the more cult classics? What are gonna be the actual uh, big classics? As you can see in a few years. So. I'm thinking that it's gonna probably kind of come down to like just straight up gameplay, you know, like w which one performs the most solidly. I, I would imagine. Yeah. Well, and it's it's kind of interesting as well. It's like what paying options do they have? Mm -hmm. uh, how well are the servers? Uh, what how the support is? How much fun, of course, it is. Like, there's a lot of things that factor in that but yeah it's gonna be interesting because it's really the genre that like everyone is just seeing like and i don't want to put too much comparisons to team fortress 2 but a lot of it is kind of in that vein of for team fortress 2 and they're just seeing hey this is something that exists for years and valve is actually not really evolving the game of team fortress 2 like there's been updates and some small things changing, some balancing, but TF2 has not changed in years. Yeah, that's in that that's fact. True. So I, a lot of people are hoping that people are getting a bit uh, tired of that game and maybe search something new that's like it, but have new cast, new stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be really interesting. I like. I'm willing to try it. I'm certainly willing to try just about all of these yeah. upcoming pseudo MOBA things, because I, I want to see how they turn out. But what about Overwatch? Yeah, I, I will definitely and, uh, try Overwatch. Overwatch. What was, actually didn't hurt anything about an E3 yep. now saying that. I mean, we heard very little from Blizzard in general. They they came up for the PC gamer mm -hmm. conference, and that was about it. Well, Blizzard never really has a big part in E3 expect if they have like a big game come like because they, they, they love BlizzCon was coming yeah. to the consoles then they were there but like they have BlizzCon and a lot of other more PC based things where they do show up so yeah Blizzard never really it's the same as Valve in this isn't that sense it's like mm. they never really have a big presence at E3 right so we're just gonna have to see where it goes D did they like to um keep things for themselves and it's actually something that we might talk a little bit more PC gaming because there's some things to say about that uh, moving on to the next thing what I'll, and it was kind of sad because I think this was pretty much Bethesda's biggest reveal even though there was not much it was the biggest reveal but it was kind of leaked before it, it wasn't directly leaked but through some technical difficulties they streamed like for few minutes accidentally and the creators of Dishonored were there talking about Dishonored so 1 plus 1 is 2 and people already were like hey Dishonored 2 it has to be coming and they were completely right Dishonored 2 is coming a right. big surprise that but DC let's see um, next to the old protagonist from the first game where I forgot the name from sorry will we play it Cor yeah, that's right. Yeah, Corvo. Corvo will be playable in the game as well as Emily Caldwin, the girl you were trying to save in the first game, daughter of the queen in the Empress. first game. So, Empress. It says queen here in my article. Why does it say she, queen? She's a part life? of royalty. She was. Yeah. There's a whole. There's yeah. a whole thing in Dishonored One. It's, 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 but yeah, it's it's interesting that she becomes part of this the cult. 
because it's, it's 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 kind of a cold. It has these special powers and can like do, do the blinking. So it's interesting she gets uh, pulled into this because you would have think that Confo is trying to not do that to her, but apparently she. Well, he did thing, or she Corvo's intention, yeah, as I say, Corvo's intentions and her desires and ambitions can be two very different things. Also, well, no, I know a, that. That's why I said like, it's going to be Corvo pulling the strings. It's kind of, of course, because it's a thing by fate as well. So, but in, in the end, it's going to be interesting. The story is going to be interesting how this is going to happen. Um, we don't, like they did say specifically, you will be playable, you will be, be able to play as both. Does this mean that we get two stories? Is it one story where you can freely switch between the characters? Uh, do you choose a character at the beginning? But it's still the same story, so there's still a lot of things we want. We can know. We only had one CGI trailer. It looked really good. Yeah, the CGI was wonderful. So, uh, we just don't know anything yeah, past it. Dishonored one was a good time, so I'm oh, yeah, excited to get sure. more of it. But the Dishonored one, it was a bit short, to be honest. DLC made a lot of it up, but it was overall pretty short. So it's going to be interesting if they gonna really lengthen the game this time I mean, it's around. a little bit of a weak argument, but there's just so many ways that you can approach different things that oh, there's no, no, a lot I'm of replayability. Oh, no, I'm not saying it's bad that it's short, because there's still a lot of collectibles and stuff, Those but tea. Dishonored 1 was more like Bethesda, not Bethesda specifically, of course, because it's not, it's Bethesda, but it's a specific studio. Right. But it was really, it, it's really the typical number one game where they are trying out a new game mechanic, can they do it? How good is it received? And it's received really well, and it's been selling, I think, pretty well. A lot of people are enjoying it, so I do think we're going to see a bigger game, a bigger world, just overall bigger experience in this title. And flying rats, I guess. For, oh, gosh. That, that was the thing in the, in the CG trailer. It was like, oh, <laughs> those rats that you hate oh, or love, now, now they're flying. They're definitely flying creatures. And it was uh, terrifying. Frosty says, the problem is Emily becomes the ruler of Dunwall. Well, if, if Dunwall is getting in a problem <laughs> and she's now an adult, uh, adult enough to become part of the experiment of the, of the cult, I can't remember the names or whatever it is, but it would actually make sense that if Dunwall gets threatened and maybe Convoy gets in problem or whatever, that she would step in and help. Right. I think there might have been a bit of a coup, Frosty, yeah. trying to remember back to the trailer, so that could have uh, have some role in it where Tiki. she got overthrown and she's like, hey, I'm going to become an assassin now and get my throne back. I'm going to take what's mine. What I'm going to be interesting, is there going to be any romance relationship between Convoy and Emily? Please and no. It sounds a bit uh, weird because Convoy is a lot older. Yeah, like, like significantly. Like, it's implied that he's her dad. Yeah, I, I, please no. It, we already maybe, had, we already had enough of that in weird. Bioshock Infinite. I don't want to see that again. <laughs> we we please, might discover that, that, that Convoy is her dad, her actual dad or something. Like, we don't know, but it's going to be interesting what they're going to do with all of that. So uh, I think we should move on to, um, well, the next thing is Elvis Clone Line. It exists. No, hey, let's move on. It does on. exist. It does yeah. exist. The, and the, um, the, the one thing of note there that I think might be interesting is something yeah. that people kind of complained about the Elder Scrolls Online is that they didn't have a lot of the like major groups and factions like the Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, Fighters Guild. And the end of the They're, trailer the, the, said we might yeah. be getting the Dark Brotherhood. So well, there was teased before though that picture, like the the Oops. screen we saw in the end, it was tweeted out before, so it's not really <laughs> something new. But, but, okay. but yeah, we're getting the Dark Brotherhood is definitely happening. Yeah, but it's not really that much new. Um, what we so did get? Oh that, God! What we did get is you see this game that Shadow is playing. Mm-hmm. Instead of oh, World yeah. of Warcraft, let's yeah, put Elder right. Scrolls on top of it. Do you want an Elder Scrolls version of this game? Shh, you didn't? Well, too bad. It's here. And and it's coming. Yeah. Well, it's coming we soon. don't know if it's it's like this, of course, but it it's... probably is a little bit different. But it's 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 probably it's going to be in Hearthstone competitor. I mean, we're, we're almost exclusively and... thinking right now that, like, uh, this, you know, Bethesda was thinking, we could do this. We, we, you know, we, we've got our own MMO. We've got we've got a popular IP with in kind of the high fantasy era. 
We we could we could turn our own game into this, right? Right? People want to do this. I mean, so did Star Wars think of that for some reason. So whatever. But yeah, we'll see about that. I mean, to be fair, there's plenty of just traditional trading card games. True. Yeah, like, that's no, like recently, physical stuff. It's recently really becoming more and more popular to go um, digital because it's just easier. It costs a lot. Because, and for you guys who don't know, I am really in uh, the Pokemon TCG. Like, I went to the Nationals a few weeks back. Went horrible. Don't worry about it. Don't <laughs> care. It was fun. But... Like you really, s we're seeing that the quality of the cards from the Pokemon card are really going down because oh. it's more and more expensive to make these cards, and it's sad. Wasn't like, expecting that. On the other hand, we're a little bit happy about it because more misprints are showing up as well. Like I have one misprint that is literally just I got like I think a stripe of a third of an inch. It's just a completely different card. And and therefore but, it's worth more. But if, if there well, are more misprints, doesn't that make the misprints less valuable? At some point, maybe. But, but uh, going back to that, it's just like, it's so much cheaper to go digital. So much easier, like... And plus the fact that um, Pokemon is not that bad because it's a lot more focused on, like, smaller kits. Right. But a lot of like magic and stuff, it's pretty hard to get into when you need it. And you need an, you almost need a group to get into the game. And if you don't, and it's pretty hard, not, not technically hard to get in that group, but it can be nervous to get into the group. And I think that with the digital version, it's a lot easier to pick up these games as well. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that often you only need. Um, you often start, get the game with starter packs and stuff that's free. Yeah. And if for physical cards game, you need to buy a starter deck. Oh yeah, no, and no, starter it's, decks it's, are nine of. It's so like starter. you know, I I love me some Hearthstone and I I, I play it all the time and you know I I definitely do better because I've I've played a long for a long time and gotten a lot of packs through play. And, well, within that, I mean, you know, that's not something you can get it with a physical uh, trading card game either, is you can't just, like, play to a point like, good job, we're going to send you more cards. Because you're just so good at playing <laughs> the game all the time. Now, it doesn't work that way, yeah, unfortunately. And, it's, and, and they can, well, but the digital, they can do that a lot more. It's like, it's not as, like, they can be like, like, we do have the Pokemon League, where if you play enough games, you get free cards and right. you free don't stuff. But you, but you have to you stuff, have to go but... hunt those events down. You have to go there. You have to do the thing. This no, is extremely I, uh, more accessible between both this is just you know like PC you, and you, mobile. Especially now it's on mobile and and if this is coming to mo it's coming to mobile devices as well. It's been confirmed. It's it's just it, it makes sense because it's just so much easier to access. And what I say, they can give you that starter pack for free. Right. They can. Um, they can reward you from time to time with free cards without, like. like I know you're excited by the way. This, by the way, but we're a half hour through the show and we haven't even talked about Fallout <laughs> Four for the Bethesda oh, conference. Just Let's a closing to point on Ford that. Hat. One second. Uh, I guess more of my point is is just off the top of my head, we have Pokemon, Magic: The Gathering, and Yu-Gi-Oh. All of them are trading card games, but mm -hmm. they're all Vanguard. completely different. Vanguard is and I really feel big like as they well. have different niches that they fit into so i don't necessarily think that this is a bad thing and as long well, as they enough. differentiate themselves enough i feel like they're not necessarily going to be completely muscling and are trying to be a hearthstone copy anyways fallout we'll 4 see. we'll see yeah fallout let's, 4 so to start fallout 4 apparent let, let's go over the hard details first uh right after fallout 3 uh even uh, before skyrim was re was revealed they already started on Fallout 4. Fallout 4 has been in development for six years since 2009. Um, of course, when Skyrim was being worked was being worked on as well, there was more concept art, IDs before mm -hmm. they actually start development. But it's been worked on. The start was there pretty much as soon as uh, Fallout 3 Last DLC was released. Yeah, no, I mean we, I mean we all knew Fallout 4 was coming. Bethesda couldn't afford oh, yeah. not to make Fallout 4. Like mm -hmm. that was that was just inevitable, 
The question was when it was gonna happen, and we got yeah. it. You know, w w when did Fallout 3 come out? 2007? 2009. Th really? 2009? Well, uh, it says to, it's been in the film since 2009, so I guess 2009 is when the last DLC hit. So it's the game probably released in 2008, 2007. I'm, I'm thinking 07, because let's see here. Either I, seven or it eight. It came out in October 28th, 2008. 2008. Okay, okay. we're we're both wrong, yeah. as it turns out. What would I say? It's either, yeah, but um, to go for our facts, Fallout 4 will start before the bomb drops. You mm -hmm. are uh, technically you're a family from a uh, father and a family and a, and a newborn kid. Uh, you can choose to either play the father or the mother. Right. Um, and then based on the appearance, you can actually change the appearance of both of them if you want to. But t to spoil a little bit. The one you don't choose don't survive, so it's not. What's interesting though? Wait, wait, wait! Hold, hold boy, on, hold on. We don't necessarily what? know if the ba if the baby survives or if the other person survives. They could survive okay, into the vault. We don't it's know that. Why that both the mother um, and the baby die? Right, but, but they didn't. They didn't necessarily that's say that's surviving think. member of the vault. So either they should have left the vault before you. Or they're telling a blind lie. So or they died in the vault. The baby's going to be the villain. Yeah, the baby could totally have survived. We we know, we, but, we're pretty sure that the other spouse died, because, you know, you got to build up, develop relationships with the other characters, certainly. But otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, it could be anything. True, but uh, to, to go back, the baby will apparently uh, change the look depending on how you and your partner looks. Also, and the baby will have a name that is customized yeah. and built in to the dialogue. Like, people will know the baby's yeah. name and they will, will say the baby's name. There will be random naming between over a thousand... Um, yeah, over a thousand over different thousand voice names. names thousand names and they're all voice actors so the guy yeah. who did uh what, what God, God, Codsworth or whatever Codsworth Codsworth the, the best household, robot butler yeah the household butler has thousand different lines only with different baby names right and we don't even know if and this is only the start because uh right after you choose you walk around the baby cries we saw the opening uh, the first nuclear uh, warheads go off in other cities. You go to the fault, and like, we, we, we don't have we don't have to later. we don't have to go through the entire inch the the whole video that no. we saw. Just uh, more yeah, the fact Fallout Four is happening. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of customization. Like people could watch the trailer. We don't have to give them a play by play. <laughs> but, but to, to clear up the story, it's like 200 later you emerge. The uh, dock there will be a dock pretty fast. Uh, of course the. Um, the, the, and the, the, I've heard the, the, the dog the, the, cannot the, the, die, by the pit, way. Yeah, the dog cannot die. The pit boy will, of course, return, and the collector's edition will come with a physical pit boy where you can put in your mobile. Even though if you don't have the collector's edition, this mo there will be a mobile pit boy app that you can work with your game, no matter if you have the collector's edition or not. And I've already bought the collector's edition. I, Are you going to enjoy your expensive phone case? Yes, yes I will. And I will have it strapped to my arm, and uh, people will question uh, it at work, uh, and I will say, Shut up, this is my money, I'm doing with what I please. I'm an adult. <laughs> but I'm an adult, boy, damn it. The people will have mini games as well as, of course, the normal interface. The only thing what people are a bit skeptical about, there's not been any sign of skills, and that's what people are a little bit scared of. Um, so... I noticed that as well. I'm not 100% concerned about it because I just expect that they're probably going to have uh, more or less what you would get from skills in the form of per uh, perks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people. Pe that's what people are saying that the perks this time will be more heavy set over the old uh, skill system. But we'll see. Maybe, like I think um, Skyrim skills were at another and completely different part than the previous games as well, so we'll see what's gonna happen. Sure. Uh, next to that we got completely custom weapons, like you can turn a pistol in t into a shotgun, into a... What's the gun that shoots nuclear missiles? It's like you can the, completely the customize launcher. them. And the Fat Boy, I think it was called. So re but, yeah, it was Fat Boy. Yeah, and... Um, the interesting part, what they showed, is like, you don't need exact components. Every single thing you will 
find and can pick up is usable and some you can um if you customize a gun it can be that you need three different items but they don't have to be three specific items they're tr three different items from a group so this way it's gonna be yeah, pretty like much if you're that guy that categories. picks up everything yeah. you will be able to use everything mm -hmm. no it'll be right. great it'll, it'll be a nice change of pace because a lot of the time for a lot of these games you know, you'll be collecting all these baseball bats. The well, baseball bats are kind of useful. <laughs> clipboards. Like, yeah, clipboards, uh, pencils, paperweights. paperweights, and things like that. Toasters. And then, and, and then you just store them somewhere. Never to be used and again. They're just there. Yeah, they're they're, um, they're completely useless. Like the toaster will be like electronics group or something, and you can use them for stuff that need electronics. Right. And talking about customization, you will apparently get a town or. I don't know if it's the town you start in, but you will get an area in the game. There will be actually multiple areas. I was going to say, from what I heard, it, it is several different areas that you can do this with. You, you can just you, you build up your you own can, society. Like, you build up a little house, a little base. Buildings. Uh, people will come in and uh, join you, and then raiders will be able to attack you. So you need the defense thing. You need to go stay defend there. So... You will be a lot more the rebuilder, and it's a lot more focus on actually rebuilding civilization this time. It seems like. Although, so, to be fair, they that, also that, said that was uh, optional. That, that whole section was completely it's and totally completely optional. Completely optional. It's not the main part of the game. It's not needed to beat the game, but it, it's an interesting because it's, seeing how we are in a post nuclear war setting. I can't talk sometimes, but we're in post nuclear war setting, so it makes sense that. Somebody starts trying to rebuild. Yeah, no. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. so. It, 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 I think it's it fits perfectly in the whole setting, and it surprises me they actually didn't done, done ha, hadn't done it before at all. It's crazy though. I, th I think this is like the it was the best possible way to kind of start off E3. I think everybody set off with really high expectations with that yes. game coming out because it was. It was, I mean, it was huge. It, the, the Everything that they mentioned, you know, like there's going to be vehicles, there's going to be goddamn jetpacks. You can <laughs> customize your armor and weapons, which is definitely, I mean, the, you could customize your weapons to a, a slightly less degree in the game. But for the first time, you can truly, finally customize your armor. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, the armor is, and it's multi, uh, multi-layered armor as well, so... Mm. You and can the, customize the legs, but you can not only customize the legs, you can customize the diff maybe the different plating, the equipment on the lag, like only the lag, for example, already has multiple components you can right. customize. And the dialogue, they're, they're, they're finally and switching away from the coming up, to, you, you know, in past Fallout games, especially 3 in New Vegas, you'd walk up to someone, you'd initiate the conversation, and you would stare them down for the next five minutes with everything else frozen in the world, and you would go through, you would scroll through lists of uh, dialogue before you decide what you wanted to do. This time it's a lot more Mass Effect candy, where you have like two, you have four or five options, or as four, two to four options, where you have to go up, press up, down on your gamepad, and probably with the mouse, uh, you have to move them up, down to choose. So, plus it's the fact that I think they talked about it's only, it's already thirteen thousand lines for the protagonist. Yeah, voice protagonist. By the way, that was another thing that was that's new to the Fallout chain. Yeah, before it's always been. It's, it's, it's yeah, already, no, no, no. On, it's, it's yeah. already thirteen thousand lines only for the protagonist. That's nothing else. Just you, and you have to remember, you can play as a uh, woman and man. So I mean, we should be that twenty six hundred lines just yeah, for no, the true. main character. And there might be even more than one voice for each. Yeah, yeah that's the we don't know I was that thinking. about. At least then. Uh, I'd so, be surprised. Um, yeah, no, with that kind of... Well, I mean, you know, Dragon Age Inquisition did it with uh, how many voices? Uh, four? Yeah, two. Oh, God. Yeah, two for... Two, uh, yeah, yeah, two for male, two for female. Well, or, like, Origins only already had, like, what, 600,000 lines, if not more? Right, but none of, them, none of them featured, uh, like, a... a the the main character did not actually speak in origin. Yeah, they Inquisition. Were written, well, not written lines. They were not voice actors. Right. This but, this uh, is going to be much bit. different. Yeah. yeah. Moving on a little bit. Um, something else. Game Fallout Shelter. You can oh, make yeah. your own no, fall. It's true. There's and a little, mobile it's a free game to play game. Is, 
Mm -hmm. It's for iOS right now. Android is coming, but it might take till the actual Fallout release before Android. Yeah, I kept yeah, I kept was, seeing yeah, on there a few, a few months. It's like, yeah, you know what else is coming out in a few months? Fallout Four. Yeah, come on, give it to I'm us. A little bit like. They should, I rather would have been that they either waited to do both releases or just be like, up front, be like, hey, this is only coming to OS, uh, uh, US, but iOS, it sucked, yeah. but by the time it actually comes out, it's not even relevant anymore and everybody is actually playing the game instead of mobile. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, Hobbs, because uh, we should check the chat on, on occasion yeah. as well, uh, the VAs don't hate their lives right now because they're done. They've recorded the Lions ages ago, hopefully. Yeah. Also, I'm well, sure they got know, paid. Don't yeah, know also they got paid. Been. They've been working on it a long time. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and I think repping, I don't, is there anything else we want to talk about Bethesda? Very excited about Fallout 4, obviously. Are both of you going to buy it? I, I know, oh, yeah. I'm almost I'll positive that Hipster's going to buy it. I need to actually get New Vegas. Uh, I guess a better question is... I have Fallout is... 3, yeah. but Fallout 3 has some problems on a lot of, like, Post on Windows 7. Oh no, I, I, had, PCs. I had such trouble trying to play Fallout 3 on my old desktop. I've not even but tried it on this one. Apparently, there is a mod for New Vegas called uh, Adventure of Two Wastelands. What put the whole world of Fallout 3 in New Vegas and a lot of the quests and the story from and uh, 3. So, I might I, I need to pick up actually New Vegas and probably try out that mod. Sure, and see from there. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm probably gonna buy it. I buy a lot of games. So, I'll probably take um, time off from work to play it, so... Yeah, no, I... I, I don't know if I will. <laughs> I I love but, Fallout uh, to death, yeah, but I don't know. Um, I, I'm gonna move on to the next day. Um, let's think Fallout 4 is coming November 10, 2015, globally. At least I guess globally on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Now, before I forget this point, because I know I will by the time we reach the game, what else is coming out on November 10th, 2015? There's another yeah, high-profile game, and I can't remember what it is. Me neither. Maybe we come across it. Is it the Minions mobile game? <laughs> yeah. I think it's I think it's Rise of the Tomb Raider. Maybe. That's Xbox One exclusive to later, though. No, I think that's earlier, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember so, what it is, no, but someone's it, trying it to compete with it. It is November 10th, 2015, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Microsoft I just, I, want, I wanted to leave out, took way too I just long. Wanted, I wanted to leave that point before we moved on, because I, again, knew I was going to forget otherwise, because that's, that's crazy to me. But anyway, yeah, no, yeah, uh, well, Microsoft, we'll I actually, see. I missed the beginning of the conference, but I heard Halo 5 was well, the first Halo thing 5. off the it bat. It started yes. with Halo 5, they showed off, uh... For V4, uh, and an, they sh they showed a four-player co-op is going to be the main campaign. You will be playing as the Spartans and a team led by Master Chief. And apparently, Master Chief, it's they're kind of fighting against each other, but it's more the Spartans are going after Master Chief. Like I don't know really the story. I've not played any of the Halo games, so it's. It's hard to say. I haven't but, yeah. either, but from the trailer, it seemed like it was kind of implying that was something that maybe happened off screen. Yeah. And they were like, so that the players coming in, it's like, oh man, Master Chief, Master Chief's cool. What could he have done to make them want to hunt, yeah. hunt him down? The mystery. Yeah, the suspense and behind that they, is a big uh, part of it. And then you get and through the, the story and you find out, yep. you know, mm -hmm. something happened. And yep. for the uh, online multiplayer to actually announce... Um, a war zone, what is in multiplayer where I it's it's a lot bigger, like a lot more players, a lot more vehicles, and on a lot bigger map. It's just gonna be a com instead of just having two teams, it's gonna be two almost armies. That's gonna come on, come on. I had a better chance than you. I think there's even yes. a, a, a bunch of NPCs fighting as well. So it's it's actually like. Almost like you're a complete army t against another army. Mm -hmm. What's interesting? It's something new, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's no, gonna be interesting I'm, to I'm see looking what they're gonna do with that. I'm also looking forward. I, I was so hoping, like uh, uh, during the PC conference, you know, they sent out Microsoft. It's like, come on, come on, PC release for Master Chief yeah. Collection. It just didn't. Happen. It's been so hinted at, and. It, I don't know. I think the big problem is is that how bad Master Chief Collection did on Xbox, and they still have some troubles with it. I think they had worked on a PC release, but they're almost scared to release it since the Xbox One uh, game is still not even working well. Yeah, we'll see. 
I'm so, hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, moving on to actually one of the biggest surprise from the Microsoft Recore. Yeah. Game by none other than Geichi Inafune and um, Armature Studios. And for people that don't know Armature Studios, this is a studio that was created by people that split off from Retro Studios right after they made Metroid Prime. We know why now. So Bam. It, it, it's Sorry. really weird set of people to work on an xbox one exclusive game to be honest mm -hmm. and it looks Especially i mean the, the cg Fune's. the cg trailer looked cool but you know we really don't well, know all that much about it what it seems right like apparently you're playing as and i guess that's going to be the main premise of the game it's you're a woman and you have this it's woman. called record so there is this core apparently that you can put into different animals and you can play with like you have to do it's probably something like a platformer or a puzzle that you have to like you can recore different machines with the same core and the same follower only sometimes it's a gorilla sometimes it's a dog sometimes it's 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 a, not a completely different animal yeah and and so it's you it definitely like i said it looks cool the cg trailer was great but we don't nothing about the gameplay yeah or the the premise other than that potential mechanic which we would which one would assume is kind of the basis of the, of the game but you have a core well, it, it's it called recore yeah. so it, it makes the most sense but of course we don't know for sure but putting one plus one it's it's kind of it's gonna t it's gonna be a mechanic in the game and it's gonna be an important mechanic in the game how they right. will utilize it what the kind of game it is we don't know right it looks interesting though yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to trying it. Uh, never, that is, because I don't have a moving Xbox on, One. Moving, yeah, I'm not gonna buy an Xbox. Moving on to what might make your Xbox One purchase viable if you bought one. I'm so sorry. You can now, or not now, oh, but you will be able to play most of your Xbox 360 games on your Xbox One. That was a big deal. Uh, that was that was that a big blow that Microsoft was able to blow to last year, Sony. Xbox specifically said that they, or not last year, I think when the Xbox One released two years ago, they specifically said this is not something we care about. And Sony actually still says that, but they... Well, they don't care about it because they don't have any ability to do so right now. The PS3, well, the, pre well, the PS3's cell architecture makes it pretty damn tough to, uh, yeah. to set it up. Because apparently, because this was something that came out just a few hours ago... <laughs> There was an interview, and apparently what they do is really clever. They're tricking your Xbox One, it, or not, they, they, what they do is if you put in a 360 game, the Xbox mm -hmm. One emulates the framework of the 360. Right. But the Xbox One is reading that framework as an Xbox One game. So that's why. So emulation. Uh, um, it, it's emulation. Uh, that's, almost emulation standard, that's almost the standard. That's almost the. But, standard um, textbook definition of emulation yeah the uh well it, it's it's a bit more difficult technically because you because you can still work all uh xbox one things inside the 360 but you can still use all the 360 features in the 360 game as well so it's pretty interesting how they explain it but um good? what's interesting though everything will be digital playable but if you put the game, if you have a physical copy and you put it inside your Xbox 360 or your Xbox One, it will read the disc and it will it instantly download the digital version on your console. So yes, you need you will get the digital version, but if you have the physical version, you can still just put it in and play it. So basically, the physical versions are more or less just Finally, keys for download right. now. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it's been sounding like, anyway. Yeah. So, uh, it, Slope, it, you're completely right, by the way. You need newer games, but it's it, it's a step in the right direction. And it's... I would say, re regardless of how it's set up, the fact that they that you know Microsoft has fun, has suddenly and very much you know enthusiastically embraced uh, backwards compatibility, which is something neither of the big two really ever even thought of when they were first starting to push these two consoles. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. That's a big change of heart. It's a big deal with Xbox, to be honest. But yeah, they're, they're, 
It um, differentiates the consoles. Right. To move on a little bit, like I think we they announced Fallout 4 will have mods on consoles. Uh, that's about pretty much anything mm. new they said about Fallout 4. They, we already but talked, they talked about, about it, Fallout so. 4 a lot the day before. But, so. Yes, they did. Yeah, so it, it's like, but yeah, mods and consoles, interesting. But we t what we say, we touched upon it with Bethesda on that. that but that, happen, that, so. that was two things with, you know, Microsoft, they mentioned two things that kind of made them a little bit more PC-ish between the, yeah, the, the, but... the ability to create or, you know, latch mods onto this. And the whole business with uh, w with their early access setup. I think that was the next thing they kind of talked about, right? Mm -hmm. No, the next one we got is the <laughs> Xbox One Elite Control. That's right. But in, in which case, yeah. Fifty bucks. And you know what? It's absurd. It's a ridiculous price. I'd pay that much for a keyboard. You know, it as as, yeah. as ridiculous as it is. If you are a, it, it, if you are a person who plays. Sad. If you're a person who and plays, it, it does... like, you know, Xbox One games every day after work, you, you spend, like, three or four hours playing, you're the only person playing on that Xbox One. You don't, you know, invite friends over True. and have a local I, multiplayer. Like, I completely agree that, that that's, if, if you're really pro, it's probably worth it. My only thing is, how much better is it than the normal version? And I think the custom is, looks, customability is the, pretty cool. Pro, I think the big thing here is more is, like... It doesn't look too much different from the original, so why can they make the original for like sixty bucks and does a few extra changes make it only one hundred and fifty bucks? Well, I, I don't think they're charging one hundred fifty bu bucks for shigs and giggles, like they, Oh no, I don't. The additions that I, they've I, made I, I is, mean, are significant. It's like why people are so mad on it? Hey, people uh, are mad because they they it's just an instant like knee-jerk reaction to different. such it's a price. Different. They're not used to for on consoles, like console gamers are used to pay the price for keyboards and mouse, but console gamers are like, hey, my most first-party controllers are 60 bucks. It's always, yeah. well, not always, but it's been for that for a long time. Well, I, and I think so, also yeah. by, by doing this, though, they kind of, they prove to to everybody, hey, this is, I mean, this is a big deal. This isn't your your this isn't your average controller. True, they're, they're we have taking it really taken it above uh, above and beyond the the usual price. This is why it, it is a luxury device that not not all of you will be using because it is very expensive. And you don't need it. Right. There's yeah, no I think that's more his point is that they haven't really shown why it's worth the extra money. Not necessarily. That I think that as well. But I, I think that the elite gamers and if they get their hands on it and they be able to try it, they probably will be able to tell. Like for us as scrubs, almost. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's yeah, it's harder to explain that why it's worth well. Yeah, I wonder because um, the, the I guess the biggest issue with that with, with marketing is they're going to have to show people why this is such a much nicer con controller. People need their hands on it before and they so can actually. What are they going to have this. some like samples at, at your local Walmart, Best Buy and GameStop? Are you going to be able to put your hands on it? <laughs> it's an expensive controller, but it maybe. Is. I mean, we'll it, see. they do the same with keyboards in a lot of like it's true. hardware stores. The only difference is that the keyboards that you find at hardware stores look a lot different than the controllers that they have open to anyone to touch in the gaming that's, section. That's that's the other issue because they've been worn down, beaten the crap. Yeah. They, they usually well, they're usually picked on a little bit more. They have so, like skin and gunk all over the place yeah. on them. Yeah, pretty much. So we'll but see. Yeah, lot lot of things. If I, I think this is something we just need to touch up a little bit. The EA access is still a thing. Not a lot of people care about, but it's an Xbox One, and they are uh, adding Titanfall and Dragon Age Inquisition to it. Uh, EA Access is a subscription a subscription based servers like PS Plus and Gold, Xbox Live, where you can play. Uh, I don't know if it's the full games, but uh, like it is full games. Full like games, games, okay. Full games, you Those can download part of the, and play uh, part of the as long as you're anyway. subscribed. Yep. No, it's, um, it's, it's actually and not bad. And, and one big thing that they did announce is that during this week, if you have an Xbox One and your Xbox Live, EA Access is free for everyone for the next what was it, week or two weeks? What is it? I think it was, I think a, week. It was a week. Which yeah, means week. that for the, this next week, you know, everybody has a free copy of Dragon Age Inquisition and uh, of Titanfall. Uh, no, because is... Dragon Age Inquisition and Titanfall will be added later. Oh, uh, whoa. Gotcha. Didn't think about that. You sure? 
Titanfall is added now. Dragon Age is will be added later. Probably after that first week, huh? I don't know with first week. I think there were more talking about actual later later, so a month or two. Don't want to uh, release a lot too much, but oh, I, yeah, mean, I, I think they still intend that. to release. I think a we said DLCs a lot about it last year, so um, yeah. let's go to the most ridiculous thing we've seen on stage that day: plans for lens. the zombie garden warfare two. Did, did, now did they the can play zone. as the zombie. That that was that was the EA conference. Have I just like missed the past forty five minutes? They had a thing they at had the Xbox garden conference too. At the Xbox as uh, okay. I, I guess it I missed the, that. What premiere at the Xbox, and then later at the EA, they had a little mm -hmm. bit more information. They pretty much only showed the trailer, I think, and talked about it. But the actual like that you can play as the zombies, and that it's a lot, a lot more characters and stuff like that was actually at the EA. Right. So I think it's better to move on indeed, and then talk a little bit more during the EA section. Probably gonna get it. Just saying. The next thing they did was actually, it's like, hey, we got a car. Then cars. They, they, oh, yeah. They Go dropped fast. the car Boom. out of the ceiling. Want to prove? Yeah, want to prove that we like cars? Here's a car. It just it just appeared. It was, it's, it was cool. It's more Force of Six. And I, to be honest, they had Henry Ford. This Ford? Ford Jr. The Ford the Third. Yeah. Ford, Ford Jr. Was Jr. The was it the Third it was or the, the third. Fourth? It was the, it was the Third. It was the, the third. third, okay. Ford the Third, not Ford the Fourth. Ford the third. Why? Why? You, when is Ford with your silly Ford? accent, it sounds like <laughs> Ford uh, to Ford. Soon. <laughs> but um, okay. Ford the third. Henry Ford the third, the CEO from uh, Ford, of mm -hmm. course, was there, and it's like, yeah, if you're a racing fan, I think I guess it's a big deal, and they, like they didn't linger on it too too long. But yeah, Forza Motorsport Six is happening. Uh, more cars, more tracks, bigger tracks. Yep. 1080p, 60 frames per second. I didn't even know Xbox One could do that. Because okay. most of their games have been 720 till now. I mean, you know, people are are starting to learn. It, it happens with every new console uh, generation. Yeah, it's true. People learn how true. to how to exploit the console a little bit more every time. You know, I mean, the games and that came out for the PS3 games, at the beginning were very different looking for the ones that came out at the end. Race games often don't have too much qua like actual. Well, the, the content usually the in, in, yeah they not focus that it has hard a lot on the of graphics, content, but I mean it doesn't have a huge open world, so it can focus a lot more on looking pretty over other games that need a lot of gameplay focus and stuff as well. It's like mm -hmm. racing hasn't changed much; so you only make the game looks more pretty, pretty much every single right. time. Um, after that, we got our first trailer for Dark and Souls Three. We only get one trailer. We didn't really learn anything. A Only that bunch it's about happening it. in beginning 2016. There was some talk about it. Um, Weld was originally called the final chapter. It's not the last Dark Souls game, but the creator said, it's "Like, okay, we're gonna release Souls Dark Souls 3, finish up the stories that was set up in Dark Souls 1 and hold, 2." Hold, hold on a sec, for sorry, sorry, real quick. Sorry, you're gonna have to extrapolate on that a little bit more as to how you know that Kanye West is a Persona 4 fan. <laughs> Or Persona fan. Because if you saw that him having that card with a thing of, there was every E3 pass had that. Yeah. And I, and if he just visit the, the Atlas boot, that doesn't say much. Still, still, it could be a thing. It could be a thing. But yeah, moving on. Dark Souls uh, 3, it will finish up the story of Dark Souls 1 and 2 completely. However, they said that to, it's like, not necessarily... Back. It, the devs actually later came back. I read today that there it, there are going to be more Dark Souls games. Yeah, that's, that's, what, what, I, that's what I'm trying oh, to say sorry. now. I'm interrupting that's you a lot. I, I like it's to like interrupt. They, and, but they did say that they want to finish up the story and take a step back, re elevate what they did with the last three games, change up the gameplay maybe a bit, or actually revamp the whole franchise if necessary. Because uh, I think the original director that started Dark Souls games has mm -hmm. stepped away, so... But yeah, it's... It's interesting, like... but So, after this, it's gonna be... It's not gonna be another year till another Dark Souls games. It's gonna be another few years before they're going back to Dark Souls. Right. They, they actually said they wanna look at more different settings as well, like they did with Bloodborne. They wanna see if other settings work, so work as well, but they said they're still... 
they still are planning to like they, it's not completely gone they want to go back to the dark souls but it depends on how much can they change it how much do they feel like it they, they don't want to just pump out more for the sake of pumping out more right very much they said i hear you even though um, you know they, they're making considerably a considerable amount of money off of these uh, dark oh, yeah. souls games because people just eat them up they love the difficulty they love Getting their face bashed into a wall several times, and then they, they can they can say, "Please, sir, have some, I would like some more." It oh is their God, thing. We're already an hour in, and we're only halfway through Microsoft. And we I still know. have to get to Sony. I know. That's because somebody but wanted uh, to talk about the Pokemon trading card game for twenty minutes. <laughs> no, what the fuck? <laughs> but um, uh, the division coming in December finally. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Xbox One will get an exclusive beta. Which we'll talk a lot more about during the Ubisoft conference thing. Right. Well, but yeah. That was, uh, that was definitely then, been, I think. And then something else we'll probably talk about during the Ubisoft thing. Rainbow Six Siege is coming in October. Mm -hmm. What is interesting though, because of the backwards capability, everyone who buys the Xbox One version will get Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2 for free. Yeah, no, that's true. So that's, that's kind of big. That's a nice yep. touch. And then we get indies. Yep, they, they talked a, a few of indies. Indie stuff. The thing that re the, the, the two games I think that really showed up for me were um, Beyond Eyes. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Came on in like three. Other, it, it, she was there at the PC, and I think she was there at Sony as well at some point. But Beyond Eyes looked. It's, it's artsy, but it's so now feels it's, it's real. It's weird because I've I've seen news for two other games where you play as blind as a blind kid. Except the other uh, two are, are FPSs. I I, I was uh, I was surprised uh, to see a third FPSs one specifically. Or not FPS. Game that is more first a person game. game. For, first person yeah, experience. It's actually was, uh, funny because game, right? uh, yeah. before E3, I actually read an article because there was um, a Kickstarter coming up for one of these games. And another team, I, I'm completely blind on his name. Don't worry, I'm just really bad with names. I'm sorry, but they shocked when it's like, hey, uh, w because somebody went to the director and be like, hey, uh, someone's making your game, and they're make they're funding the game that we're technically been making. Yeah, and I was reading about and that too. And apparently, for the next few days, the whole studio was in chaos. Mm -hmm. But then after some studying and stuff, it look like there's a lot more uh, difference but yeah it's it's really interesting this one is a lot more archy it's a lot yep. more about giving you an idea it's like hey this is how this is trying to put you in the mindset this is way more putting you in the mindset from this is how a blind person is kind of seeing the world not even like we're seeing more than a blind person well of course but a lot it's it's a lot farther than a lot of other things get the other one which is really it's, cool it's a lot more used as a shock effect so right no, i i definitely like the idea and i was worried because you know they came out for it during the microsoft conference i'm like no no i don't want to have to buy an xbox for this and then she came out during the pc conference so i was like oh, okay and the sony I think. and the sony I th yeah i think she was there for everyone it wasn't she, so I don't she think was you have pc to worry too sony much about... she only wasn't at like at Nintendo, UB and EA, hey, I think, and Square, technically. Mm -hmm. And the other one that was really interesting was Cuphead. Right. Cuphead is a game that is shaped like a forty a 40s cartoon. Oh, yeah. Sadly, Cuphead, it's an Xbox, yeah. It looks really it's cool. It's one exclusive, I think, at least for Not now. Not PC? But hopefully it's coming to the PC, but there's no technically news. But, yeah, it looks interesting. It looks really fun, really... And really that goofiness from the 40s, 50s cartoons. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so loving the look of it. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, I, I highly suggest going out and looking for that trailer because it's it is extremely different looking, which is yeah. great. I, I love I the look. cartoon um, style. And it's kind of it, apparently it plays kind of like Mega Man in stage setting. Not real. As you, it's not like you will get their powers, but it's like the loot uh, not the the shoot the 2D shooter style gameplay mm -hmm. the information so, yeah, that i'm be looking at says that really it's coming out on xbox one and windows so yes okay thank goodness um so it may have been an exclusive and then microsoft we got thing. to 
is there any indie game that you guys want to talk about? Because there was a bunch more, but the rest was either not really exclusive or was like, eh. The, 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 big, the biggest two was ones, but... the, the blind girl one and, and uh, Cuphead. Just because they, they nailed the that, that, that aesthetic so well. Up, but they didn't talk about it. I'm interesting is uh, Behemoth's Game 4, but they really just showed a flitch of it, so there's not yeah. much to talk about it. Not really. If you don't know, Behemoth's the mega of like uh, Casual Crashers, Battle Block Theater, Game 4 is their fourth game. But I'm very much looking forward to, to a, a lot of the looking a forward lot of the to, indies. but they didn't really show anything yeah. more than it's, hey, it's coming to Xbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that was after their little indie showcase was that the then Hololens? Access. Oh, it was the early access bit, early which access. we kind of talked about. The Hololens, I'm, so I just want to get to Hololens so we can move on. But early access, yeah. Steam, uh, Xbox is getting an early access Caesar. program like Steam Early Access. It's called Xbox Game Preview. It's early access. I think a lot of things have already said about early access on Steam, and I think the same thing can be said right here. So I think we should. Let's move on a little bit. Yeah. If you like early access, Next, you're going to uh, like this. If you don't, then yeah. yeah. Next, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. And it looks really good. Yeah, it looks real pretty. Uh, sadly, Extremely of pretty. Course, or sadly for them, great for me because I want to play this game really bad. I'm a really big Tomb Raider fan, especially from the reboot. Uh, um, unfortunately, what is it? Rise of the Tomb Raider. Right, but I mean, what you were going to say, unfortunately... Uh, Unfortunately, or no, I said fortunately. Oh, fortunately. Unfortunately for for them, fortunately for me, it's only a time exclusive on the Xbox. So it will release on November tenth, two thousand sixteen, yep. on Xbox One. You were right. Uh, but it will only, but at we're guessing um february march release on every other console because it is on holiday exclusive so beginning of 2016 we'll get it on pc and ps4 but i'm pretty much will be waiting for because yeah yeah well we will see because uh... <laughs> but yeah it looks really good the gameplay what well, it, it was definitely gameplay that if you play the, uh, yeah. the the first game this is gameplay mm -hmm. and it looks really slick and smooth and if this is the xbox one version then it's gonna look good on PC as well. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looked really promising. I'm looking forward to get my hands on it. Though I will say, like, and and to put and to put in perspective, first of all, I have over 300 hours in the original game, and I have all the recent Tomb Raider comics. I will say though, like after all that Avalanche stuff, both of those those two, both Lara Croft and her little guide man, both dead, so dead. 100% hella dead. Washington. Is this Majora's Mask game theorying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, she, she, it's her uh, hallucinations <laughs> oh as God. she's buried in the snow after the avalanche. That's the uh, entire game. But yeah, and um, uh, next up is the <laughs> Rare Arena. Replay Collection with over 30, or not over, actually 30 rare games for 30 bucks, releasing on August 8th on xbox exclusive with over ten thousand gamer score so if you want that gamer score you can get them it looks like it will have all the original games so uh conquer's bad fur day the actual n64 version benio kasui the n64 version not the remakes uh battle toads and even more special is the battle toads arcade version yep. what is really what a lot of people think is the better battle toads but it's really hard to play and get to so no Goldeneye. Uh, yeah, no Goldeneye, Goldeneye wasn't there. no Donkey Kong. Perfect Dark, uh, though. No Diddy Kong. Perfect Dark, yeah. And apparently, so, it's not like, of course, all the, Nintendo, all the Nintendo IPs and the IPs that's not specifically owned by Rare himself will not appear. Right. But it's a lot of games. Perfect Dark, oh, yeah. For sure. Blast Corp, Jet Set, Gemini, um, Battletoads, what I say. So, it's it's a 30 games for 30 bucks. If you oh, yeah, no, it's a great one, pile. Definitely worth to pick up. I will say it was a and bit. I thought it was a bit weird that when they had their advertisement, they showed uh, the Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts, but they didn't show uh, Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Tooie. You noticed that too, didn't you? Yeah. 
So I'm Bet like, Yuki why are you showing was the one that people don't like? shown as one of the, like, titles that came by, so I'm Oh, it, it was listed, but he's, he's talking about, like, the... It's there. He, he was talking about, like, the gameplay when they were showing... Because it, it's supposed to be yeah. a, a sizzle reel. It's supposed to be the best of the best. And they showed the one Banjo-Kazooie game that everybody hates. To be honest, I think we're got... It's, this is not the best of the best. This is everything Rare has made, and they oh, own yeah. their own. They, they own, like... But yeah, anything but, that's not, but, but that's it, not were they from somebody else. But the collection then, isn't the best of the best, quote unquote. But the thing that you're trying to show everyone that's like, here, this is something that you want to buy is they. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't expect that they'd be like, like hey, you remember that thing that you hate? It's like in case you you're wondering, because that's in there. In case you're wondering if we have all of the games, we also have this one. So yeah, yeah, surprise. You mean that? But game they also you don't tried to sell about? it by saying, "Here, yeah. have ten thousand gamer score." Yeah, that too. All of a sudden, all, all the, <laughs> the, the that was all crazy. the achievement hunters out um, in the world are like, "Huh." But um, moving on, rare had something else. Sea of Thieves. What is an? Oh yeah, I forgot MMO about that. That looks cool. Pirate pirate simulator mm -hmm. coming to PC as well. Work together. Uh, where you work together at, on a boat. As a crew, like everyone in in the, on your boat is an actual person, and you work together as a crew on a boat. Actual to people. To other boats with actual people. So you're trying to kill other actual people. Right. With actual people. No, I, I, I it from for off off you know just the first glance from it, I thought it looked cool. I don't know how well it it's going to work cool, in practice, but, but for now I, I like it. Like at this point, it, honestly, it's been. It's been so long that Rare made an actual game that's not Kinect Sports. Well, I almost don't care that it's. I almost don't care that it's not a Rare game. It's just the first time in a it long a time that I've. I, I, I know. I don't. I don't necessarily care that, about that as much as the fact that we have a game about pirates again. A real honest to goodness game that is an Assassin's Creed game. Well, since we Black Five was actually one of the better. No, no, no. It was, it was great. It was but, great. But like, but it was. Yeah, they it. threw I, that yeah, in. It's gonna be interesting that because, to be honest, what a lot of said is true is like, since we Black Flag was one of the first games that actually got really that ship to ship battle uh, of the pirate age. What you don't see a lot in games, and this is pretty much a game that's completely actually that. And this is like, mm -hmm. I think this is the first game where you have, where it's it's gonna be like the. You have the space games where you like play with actual people on a complete bridge, and this is the, pretty much the same. You have a ship with a full. They didn't really show any like, of that, I don't think. Like, no, they they, they, they didn't hinted really at show it. What you it would do. was a CGI trailer, but seeing how like they specifically showed everyone with like their names on top of it, they seemed it's like pretty they had clear. gameplay. I was to say like, that that looked almost exclusively you, gameplay. Like, really doing anything that got me so it, yeah, that excited? Really, like they're like, I don't know oh, man, if it's boats are shooting at each other. Not. Skeletons. I mean, scary. It, <laughs> it showed you walking along a beach, and then you had other pe players next to you. They, they wouldn't they wouldn't mm. put in people's names over their heads if it was if it was a CGI trailer. That would have been just a waste of time. No, other than to prove I, that it was an MMO. That, MMO. It wasn't really. It was still. It wouldn't be a waste of time because that would have shown like, hey, every person you meet here are actual. Everyone you will meet in the game are actual people. Like, it, even if it was CGI, it was still purpose. I even then though, I, I feel like mm. they would have at least made it look prettier. Like the the names are just kind of hastily drawn over their heads, kind of like a <laughs> lot of MMOs. I don't know if it's game if it was complete gameplay or not, but beside that point, it was. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it seems like well, it has potential, but I don't think that mm -hmm. they showed enough to really get me excited. Fair enough. Hey, Shadow. Shadow, that thing yeah. you want to talk about? The uh, Rise, the, Rise the, of the, the Tomb Raider coming out the same time as Fallout 4. No, 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 the yeah. other thing. Um, Eve Valkyrie is coming out for both the Oculus Rift and the, uh, and the Pro Project Morpheus. Because yeah. that game is a <laughs> well, whore! They first remind us Fable Legend is a thing, and mm -hmm. then they get to the Hololens. Right. No, it's true. The Hololens and, was pretty cool looking. Yeah, there's Minecraft. Like they, Minecraft. Uh, they talked a little bit how Oculus will ship with like their Xbox One controller. You're actually working with Valve, with Valve VR, uh, working good on Windows 10, and then they showed the Minecraft gameplay. The only small thing. Apparently, it was a little bit misleading. Oh, absolutely, because, it was misleading. Uh, what we saw is like the full picture that is emulated at that point. What is that's actually the thing is actually emulating that on your glasses at that point. 
but what you actually see is a lot smaller than we actually saw. Yeah, so the, the the field of view is a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. And that that's actually been a recurring theme from let's see, back when they showed it off at the uh, Microsoft yeah. conference way back when when they first debuted it. On the other hand, it. I do I do have to say it's really hard to show this off in another way. So I don't know if it was inten like it's 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 maybe it's probably intentional trickery a bit. But on the other hand, you can't really blame them because there was not really another good way to do it good. But overall, it looks interesting. On the other hand, except like games like Civilization, are there really another a lot of other games that can really use this? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's the interesting part is like you can just put them on and play games. So I mean, yeah, I mean everywhere one thing you that want. I've seen in like advertisements is you can just like put a screen on like a wall anywhere right. and like it'll it's, play what well, you yeah, that's the thing that's what we pretty much talk about you don't put a screen on a wall it's just like you, it's like you're seeing something on a wall that's not there that's what, not in hologram that's what I was it's just yeah. it's augmented reality well, yeah and i don't think anybody is declaring that like the glasses have these emitters that fire screens on the walls it's it <laughs> it's everything based on what you see in that little visor on the top of the hololens we we don't have 3D holograms yet. That's that's we're we're no. pretty far off from that. So we have to go yeah. settle with glasses for now. But yeah, I, uh, to be honest, I don't think there's much else to talk about there. It's like it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's it, cool. It's very cool. I don't. Ex I'm curbing my enth enthusiasm until I can get a hands-on. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think I felt the same way about the Rift too. And after and I then, saw the Rift, I was very excited for what it's worth. Finally, we get to the final of the Microsoft Conference: Gears of War Ultimate Edition, what was later revealed coming to the PC as well, and Gears 4. But by so the way, called Gears 4, not Gears of War 4, Gears 4. Yep. Which, uh, hey, you know, new Gears game. I'm, I'm kind of surprised they... Well, I guess I'm not entirely surprised they brought it back. But it looks but on good. on the other hand, it looks it's, nice. like it's not coming till next year, 2016. So it's probably yeah. going to be one of the bigger shows, uh, showpieces next E3. Because mm -hmm. Halo 5 will be released by then. So it's pretty much like, hey, l we end the show with the big piece. What, what is going to be the big beginning part of our show next year, pretty much. Right. Yeah, it's holiday 2006, so it's a long. 20, ways uh, off. 2016. But we get ultimate uh, gears Sorry. for ultimate yeah. edition, and God, people so are a little screwed. bit complaining about the fact it's like, hey, we already have a game that's 360 that's already in like, it was already pretty 720 on the 360, and apparently it's still gonna be 720 on the Xbox. On the PC, it will come up to 4K actually. Yeah. But yeah. We, we we didn't necessarily know it was coming to PC during Microsoft conference. Of course, they were. Oh no no no! They're no, very no, much no. excited to show that, like, yeah, this is Xbox One exclusive. And well, PC. a lot of games it's was fine. like Windows 10 and Xbox are exclusive. Like right. a lot of games we mentioned are coming to both, and I'm kind of scared about that because I think that I think Microsoft is trying to go back to their Windows 10. More oh, in yeah. the next Xbox is gonna be way more a Windows 10 machine. Well, no, I, I'm thinking this like machi the, machine. The I'm, I'm thinking the Xbox One is going to be uh, more of a Windows machine. They're trying to integrate mm. all of their systems. Their Surface, True. the Surface, True, the Xbox but One, I Windows think this 10. This one still stays a little bit separate. We'll, we'll have a bunch of exclusive at some point still, but I do still. Because you, you're, you're, you're talking like you're talking like next generation, gonna be, but that's gonna like, not gonna be for another four or five years. We'll talk about it later during the Nintendo stuff. But <laughs> well, Nintendo's a different business. That th that console's <laughs> no, been no, out no, for an extra I mean, year or two. I just mean that I think that if you look at how much they're bringing to Windows 10 and trying to focus, I think Xbox One is going to be the last dedicated gaming platform from Microsoft. Next up, yeah, it's going to be completely integrated with each other. Well, it, it's going to be less of like individual devices and more just a conglomeration of things scattered yeah. around your house that build up to a general Windows setup. Yeah. I think we should, should move on to the next conference because we still have... Like, next one is pretty short, I think. Reasonably, yeah. Shadow's favorite. Yeah, apparently everybody gave it an F- minus uh, because, you know, lol, yay. Well, I have to admit when, like, you have... You begin good with Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, that looks good. Go away, Shadow, you can tell. 
Not, well, they didn't show much off of it, but they <laughs> they a announced that there's definitely another Mass Effect game coming out. Uh, Which they B, did last year, right? Uh, did yeah, I guess they they talked about there's gonna be another Mass Effect game. Yeah, we didn't know the name. Mm -hmm. one. We knew well, it was gonna be the same we universe. We have past that. a lot of information. Like the make will be there. We already knew make will be there, but we did. We now know that the game will be in Andromeda. For people don't Andromeda. know that's the next galaxy or Milky Way. Yeah, I don't it, know. it's the galaxy. It's our neighboring galaxy, the next biggest one yeah, so closest to us. It's gonna be a completely different planet. Earth is not gonna play a big role in this one, but of course, but there are gonna be humans. Was like a big thing. They're gonna be humans. A lot of, like, it, it, I think, and one thing that was important to know: the people we see, we have not seen the protagonist in the trailer. This right. was just the N74, so it might be that we're gonna focus a lot more on the N7 programming, like, we might because when we met Shepard in Mass Effect 1, we really had someone who already been through a lot mm -hmm. so we might actually go to back more, like we have somebody who just came from the program or something, or is still in the program, so Assuming I, the program it's, it's, still exists for this new group. Yeah. True, but they ha all still had N7 printed on them, so... Also, have we even confirmed if we're definitely going to be playing human characters? Like, I, yes, I think that's the only thing? They stated yes, they that confirmed, the, the character as an N7, that N7 person was a human, but past that, no. No, the, the, the person we saw in the trailer is not the protagonist, but they right. did confirm that we will be playing as a human male or female. Did they? That's confirmed. Okay. Yeah, they confirmed that. Where? where? Like, I'm, I'm genuinely curious, because I've been, I've been hounding for information <laughs> for Mass up. Effect. I can just skip fine, but no, they did confirm right after the, pre the presentation. Not that, that I doubt we'll you, I'm just playing. curious. We'll search it up after we're done here for you. Please. Long story uh, short, we don't know a lot. Yeah, but it should be exciting. We don't know a lot. We don't know what's happening. We know at least a little bit more. It's going to be interesting. Mm. So Looking I forward to hearing like more raising. about it. Uh, yeah, was Need for Speed the next thing that came out? Yep, Need for yep. Speed was the next thing, a reboot. What was really interesting, though, is the switch They didn't have a car between... that dropped down. Well, not that, but They're the interesting part was really the real... Yep. The, 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 the cutscenes with the real people seemingly flowing into... The creation menu, like yeah, that was pretty cool. Saw a difference between if the car was real or not, and that the human humans were definitely real. Those were not CGI render humans. That was clear, but they it flowed over so clean. We're gone a long way with uh, real life persons in, uh, in in video games. Yeah, no, it it, it looked very nice and and. I I might actually get it. I, I love. No, I love. always fun. I used to play. Uh, what was it? Need for Speed Underground a ton, and so I, I might I be think looking I forward like, to that. I bought like Hot Pursuit last, last God, like midwinter because I wanted kicked. to do some racing game for one. But yeah, racing games can be fun. I, I never pay too much attention to them. I don't put a lot of time into it, but it's fun to have one or two around just to. Sometimes start up and do some racing because racing is just fun. Yeah, Burn totally Paradise is. was one of them as well. Um, moving on, Star Wars: The Night, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, is getting an expansion called. They did not put the name here. Why did they not Knights put the, the name? Knights of the Fallen Empire. There you go. Into, oh yeah, Knights of the Fallen Empire. It's, it is right. Here. Crap ton more <laughs> PVE content. That kind of it's a lot of PVE builds up the campaign content, more, and quote. it's apparently they work close to get a bit of Bioware this. to try to get the Knights of the Old Republic feeling in there, so yeah, I'm, 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 it's gonna be interesting. I, I, I still wanna play it. I don't play it, it but yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely cool that they really listen to the people and it's like, hey, we want to have that Knights of the Old Republic feeling and they're trying to build this, if this is gonna work, we don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I definitely actually want to get through it at some point. I've always wanted to for the, the original Old Republic setup, but uh, especially mm -hmm. with this DLC coming in, or expansion, I guess is a better word for it. I, yeah. I definitely want to see where they go with it. And uh, the, moving on to, I think, one of the two biggest uh, p parts of E3 this Unravel. year. Unravel! Yarny! Yeah, Yarny. Oh god, that poor guy. Yarny. So, for those unaware, like, EA had this—they had this own little indie, pseudo indie game that kind of came out. Uh, 
the guy, the, one of the, the head developers, yeah. came out. Poor guy was was literally shaking. <laughs> he, he takes out this yarny doll, and it's so adorable. And if I, I really recommend going on Twitter and find his Twitter account because he's been taking pictures with this doll all over yes. E3, and it's adorable. And this game looks so good. It looks good, and he did confirm that a lot of like the backgrounds are just pictures. Like they used a lot of picture technology. Time again, like Solid Adventure. Yeah. EA is going Solid Adventure on those guys. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but um, it looks so. It it looks adorable. It looks good. It really does. I just can't say much about it, more about it. I I can't wait. Like I after say... yeah. I think that just to play devil's ad advocate a little bit, I don't know if it would get be getting as much attention as it is if not for the fact that he's the one that was selling it. That's what I'm like, saying. Like, I, I, I think that was selling his presence the, there was a big part of it. Like, I don't think it would have been the same if EA would have just brought out someone uh, and it was like, here's this indie game that we're working on. Of, of course, but hey, it's selling, it's selling something as part of the whole process of making a game popular, and... It well, looks really good, and I, I, and the puzzles what I've seen in gameplay looks really fun and well, simple, fun and interesting. EA like, Cell's team knew what they were doing by sending him out. Is all they, I'm saying. Completely. You think so? Like, just the fact, just the fact that this guy, like, he came up with, like, they were, ma they wanted to make a game, the studio. They didn't really know what to do with the next project, and he was on his a family trip, and he just got, to, uh, he was just bored for a moment, so he got some barbed wire actually and just start making a figure rolling it into jarn and just made this doll and start making I, pictures everywhere with this doll and I don't know if it's necessarily barbed studio. wire that would be a little terrifying well the barbed wire it's it's um I thought well, just wire iron iron wire or yeah. whatever it's called there but, you go uh, English who cares <laughs> but um <laughs> But but he just went back to students like, hey guys, look what I did! I, mean, I want to mm. make a game of it, and everybody yeah. was directly on board. And I just think the whole LP, I think the appeal is of course the ID, how the game came to be as well, of course. But I just it, the whole game itself, I think that the game would have sell, looked well either way, to be honest. But the fact that Baraka really can recite that pretty much word for word basically kind of proves my point, I think. Yeah, but I, I don't think at, at the same time though, I, I don't think they could have they could have scripted or even really planned the his genuine like support for that game. No, no. Like he was so, yeah, genuine. I think is the best way to put it. And he, yeah, Completely. sure they they could have said you know oh if we bring out this developer he's a cool guy maybe he'll do well in front of this crowd. I don't I, I don't think you could have yeah. gotten as genuine of a of a show out of him as like. Maybe EA was otherwise hoping. I, I just don't think you could have scripted that. Yeah, I think, and, and what what Slowpoke is saying as well, it's like if it was to script it, he would have stumbled more, shaken more. Like it wasn't. It was. It looked genuine. It didn't look like it was. Because it's one I'm of not those saying that, that I, I'm not saying that I think that it was that, scripted. That I'm just I say, saying that I think I, I that they knew that he was you're, going you're, to be that genuine. I I, it, I'm, I agree with you. It's like he really helped selling the game, but I don't think it was planned. But um, to be like this, but I think we don't have. To, I, I, we shouldn't discuss this too long. The game looks adorable. I'm excited for Red, even if it's just for the fact what kind of hype this is. Maybe maybe it does disappear after a while and everybody forgets about it till it actually releases. But for now, I think it was one of the more high points of each. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Like they say, it's for me. It was one of the two big things. Yarny was one of the two big things of E3, and the other one was actually Mini Wheat. Mini Wheat. Oh, Mini Wheat. But that, Mini that was that was Twitch. That wasn't necessarily E3. Twitch. It wasn't Nintendo as well. Mini Wheat was very polarizing. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 The, a good chunk of the population suddenly realized that nine-year-olds are kind of annoying. <laughs> that as well. But on the other hand, it was so genius because it was just it, it it the thing. I think the thing is overall, it's just the fact that it's really a an, an, an group that is really represented mostly by Nintendo, but 
a lot of other companies as well where games are made for that age group but they're never really coming up during e3 they're really not re represented so having him there was really get a great idea from twitch yeah i suppose so but uh, moving on, we're going back to what we talked about before, Garden Warfare 2. Yeah. For the zombies. Which, I, and by the way, because I, I, I actually am someone, right. who, I'm someone who actually enjoys the Garden Warfare games. Uh, the well, game. Game. Well, to soon to be two games. It's, yeah, it's okay. a series that has, is better than it has any right to be, if that makes any sense. Yes. It's, it's, it's stupid. It's stupidly good. It's like, yeah. it's not even that good. It's nothing special. It mm -hmm. just hilariously stupid and that makes it just stupidly fun it doesn't make any sense right but no but uh, i played a lot of it but that's mm -hmm. what it seems to me and then the zombie came on stage yeah the the, the super zombie was a little much with uh what, what song was that playing uh, danger zone danger zone oh God. yeah they, just they, they've i well, think it, it was it was too much of a flip between the previous announcement yeah. and uh, into that. Yeah, because you had like the Yarny, really cuddly, yeah. really sweet. I, I think it was I think it was a poor transition there, more than anything else. Yeah, everybody in the chat was like, oh man, uh, feels are dead. Yeah. We had all these feels, but now they're dead. Right. I, yeah, I think like, it would have worked. I think it would have worked after like under Need for Speed or something. It was just it was poor organization mm -hmm. on that part because he could have done it after uh, I don't FIFA know. I, I think, and woke I everyone think up. The there you other go. Hand, it did kind of work because it was really and, and Revolt was really in the sweet and feeling, and then they went went back to like, hey, we go back to the energy. So right, but they, I think it, it, well, it, people it, might complain at first. I but what ended up happening could more could have done a little bit better. But overall, I think I don't think it was a bad idea. To what what, what like happened? That. What ended up happening more though was that they're like, because EA gets this, uh, it gets this reputation of kind of the dude bro, uh, you know, corporation. Yeah. They're they're the ones who make all these sports games, and so yeah, of course they're Sport. they're gonna have, they're gonna have a lot of sporty things. That's what they do. It's it's part of their stuff. Like you can't <laughs> escape it. And then to to have that kind of like, oh, remember remember this cool game that you just saw that had this really heartfelt uh, kind of announcement about it. Well, here's also this one guy who's just like, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna play Danger Zone. We're having this Top Gun kind of feel to it as uh, as yeah. the guy in a suit comes <laughs> out. But overall, like, I think that overall it was not that bad of an idea. And, yeah. and but to go back to actually Garden Warfare Two in um, Zombie Defense, that's a, a new one. You can play as the zombie side this time, and actually, well, you, you, in you played as the zombies in Garden Warfare. True, you but uh, they actually put a lot more work, I think, in this time in the zombies, more classes, more fleshed out. And one of the big things is, is like in the previous Plants vs. Zombie games, you uh, played as the plants to defend against the zombies. The zombies right. were attacking. That's what I'm trying this is to now say. a little bit in the future, and the plants actually had lost. The zombies has taken over, and the plants need to attack to take over. This, this time, it's the zombies that are defending, and the plants in the attack. Well, I, I, at least from what I saw, it was more that the the plants were were taking the fight to the zombies as opposed to the other way around. Not necessarily that the zombies mm. won. Quote unquote. I don't know. It's, it's uh, it, it was a bit fake. I thought they said that. Yeah, I got they... the impression that the plants lost as well. Really? Okay. Might, yeah. All right. Uh, I, uh, it might be that the zombies were winning, not so much that they already won, but they were getting more to the winning side, and the plants decided we need to attack now. And then this orange was there, and he has cool shades. Yeah. The, the, though I doubt that there's going to be a deep, complex story in Plants vs. Zombies. That is also true, warfare, to be fair. So. <laughs> Honestly, no way, but... Not, not, not that nor there yeah. should there be. There shouldn't be. But that was so, that was uh, actually they they said that it was a legitimate legitimate complaint that people had and it was like uh, mm -hmm. plants were permanently on defense throughout the multiplayer which is a fantastic multiplayer but if you wanted to attack you had to be as a zombie and if you wanted to defend yeah. you had to be a plant it was just that's how it went and now that's mixing up the formula a little bit which is kind of cool. Hi, shadow, shadow. Yes. Do it like sports. Yes, then there was sports, which this is why, well, of course... One other thing on the Plants vs. Yeah. Zombies is they did okay. say that they're planning on having uh, continuous Free updates content. for the 
free content for it. What is now, pretty much a common given nowadays? It's like right, it's trying... but it's something hey, that they're planning on doing. It's been announced. That actually doesn't have a lot of content in there. We're gonna give more free content. They're Which I mean, the the, the 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 guard warfare games. I don't think they're they're full price sixty dollar games, right? Oh no, I'm pretty no. sure they're they're like, I think they're 30, like 20, 40. 25 bucks, thirty yeah. bucks. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that. It's and they been it was actually a lot it was surprising just how games. much garden warfare was supported after they released it. Like a good chunk of that oh, no. stuff was free DLC, which is pretty darn neat. <laughs> But, Though, um, some might argue that the game mode of having the zombies be able to uh, attack is uh, should have just defense. been update for the original game. That is true. I could agree a little bit, see, like seeing how much, like you have four new attack classes for the zombies, new classes for the plants as well, so I feel like maybe yes, but seeing how many new classes they're adding and a new game modes and stuff and new maps i think it's worth like even they could have done it with a dlc expansion pack because it would have been paid dlc anyway yes but i don't think plus the fact that you can put all your characters you did in modern warfare one put over garden warfare modern warfare, uh, garden, garden, sorry, garden, garden warfare two so overall it's like yeah, they could have just gave it a subtitle and released it as an expansion pack, but is is it really that different in the end? It, I if mean, you can it, put it sounds. All your characters from one into two. I mean, this this well, is this is the price of the expansion. Just being a free update. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's questionable. So much People content. spend money on whether or not it's worth yeah, it. They it's can true, make that but, decision on their well, own. I've seen so much new content that this would be been no way be able to sell free for they I no. think I think you're running into a Left 4 Dead 1 versus a Left 4 Dead 2 sort of setup here. Yeah. There was a true. lot of people complaining that Left 4 Dead 2 didn't bring enough to the table to warrant a, a full new release, which you yeah. know, you could argue either way, but in the end it I I, I certainly think it was worth it in the end. To have a mm -hmm. brand new game, but no, that's just me. And even then even with that comparison, Left 4 Dead 2 eventually just brought all the stuff from Left 4 Dead 1 over. Yeah. Like they're doing yeah. with this. Anyway, sports. 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 Uh, and, uh, <laughs> they started with uh, NLA and hockey. They they started off good, I think, because they had, like, first all the other sports. What's that were soccer and football. I said NBA. Oh, I'm pretty sure you said NLA to first start, to start That's off. That's what I heard. Anyways. But, um, they, they start at, at first with, like, hey, this is pretty good. They, they're bundling a lot of the sports games together. They're going to just do one big section of sports the games. The Hoop God. For like, 20 minutes. The Hoop God. The Hoop God, which they were st the internet's still trying to find. They think they found yeah. him, maybe, but we're, we're not we're not certain about that yet. <laughs> Nobody even knows who's the guy. Then they went, to, uh, they, they went over a little bit of golf, a little bit of hockey and stuff, and it's mm -hmm. fine. They just put, didn't put a lot of attention to it. I'm like, hey, this is going pretty well. Put a little bit more in NBA. I'm like, okay, NBA is one of their bigger titles. I thought, like, okay, so they're going to probably put a little bit more time in NBA, FIFA, and Madden. Mm -hmm. And then uh, FIFA and Madden game later. Oh, God. Well, so... Let me let me stop you there for a second because this is was a common complaint amongst a lot of people and they were almost all exclusively people who go ah <laughs> sports ball ah uh, <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay before, before let me start on that that Pele you, you, although they gave him way too much time to talk because uh, they should have let him they should have cut him off at some point and just said let's move on uh, he is <laughs> he is a living legend of of this of that I whole thing get this it'd be like. Get, I've been trying to think of a good important. combination with that, but I haven't been able to come up with I, a good I get he's setup important, for it. But what you, there were two big things, indeed. Was like, yes, they were too long, and second, you had to pay. He was like, yes, he was understandable, but it was pretty hard. Like, he wasn't hundred percent understandable, and he was like, it was. Well, he doesn't have great English. If you didn't I, I think so. Uh, really... Someone I know has a, has a similar issue. <laughs> Sorry. Shots fired. Bam. No, but. No, but I'm, I what I mean is that um, I, I I think overall that he was there was not that bad. It's just that yeah, it was too long. Uh, not a, like the mics. He was pretty 
um, low in volume. Well, he can't do much about. Well, that, that was his voice. That's, it was. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was just him. He has a soft voice, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it was. I think that if you weren't excited for it or uh, actively trying to follow it, it was really hard to follow. So, like, I feel bad for the guy because he is a living legend, and I, yeah. he's really great. And then he, he gets to eighty percent of the like world, this. he is he he is a god amongst men. Yeah. To us, to gamers, like, they didn't care, and that was the problem. I think I think the biggest problem is mostly like, yes, the sports need to be there, and that's what I say. That's why I thought, hey, they're doing good at the beginning of the sports section with NBA. It's like, hey, they bundling together, they're talking a bit about it, they're presenting, they're presenting what's new, they take about half an hour, but what happened, like, to go back, NBA happened, I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit about that, but it happened. Well, I was just going to say, Shadow, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say to you here what I said to you during the conference is, yeah. I understand that he is a legend, right. but I still feel like it would be similar to bringing, like, a chess champion to speak at like the halftime at the Super Bowl. It's, yeah, it but like, but so you, you're therefore implying that you know FIFA isn't necessarily connected well enough to the rest of the gaming community. You're, you're saying that the uh, that nobody nobody at E3 necessarily cares about the about about sports. Well, and, and, this, to the, and we had this discussion, and like, let me, let me um, mm -hmm. impress it. We had a discussion on Skype a little bit as well. It's like, yes, there is a following of sports games, and there's probably and a to, chunk of but, them. But to, E3 to the point, as well, to but, the point, however, you know, Twitch, they're, they're a big pusher of E3, right? And a lot of people watched the EA conference on, e, or on Twitch, yes? yes. If, you check the, if you check the list of games, the top games on Twitch right now, I almost guarantee you that FIFA is in the top five. It's true. It's a there's a big following on Twitch for FIFA, and therefore I, I there's a lot of crossover true, there. And I, that's why I, I do really think. But at the other hand, I do kind of have the feeling that still, and I might be completely biased. And I might be completely. We biased, are, and that's the that problem. I I still have the feeling that still it's still a minority. It's. Like, yes, there are a lot of people, and yes, they should put time into it. But, like, I think the, what annoyed me the most was, like, okay, after NBA, let, let's go back a little bit to the show. After NBA, they presented Star Wars Galaxy Heroes and Despicable Me Paradise, or right. Dominion's Paradise. But it's fine, but they're mobile games, they're, like, Galaxy, uh, uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is pretty much, again, Hearthstone Glow. Yep mobile collectible card game i mean paradise is another 16th Jeez. collect like farm fill kind of game only with the despicable me people like it wasn't big and then they 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 paid some attention to this uh again it was star wars galaxy hero no battlefront what people were exciting for so it's like okay so we have star wars but not the care part we care about mobile games and then they, we just had nba for about 15 20 minutes and then they put like five minutes in some mobile games and they go right back to sports yeah. and that would no, yeah. happened and it's like another 30 minutes of fifa and fine what happens next after fifa for 30 minutes we had fifa it's like yeah, no, I hear you. God damn, it's over. And, and actually, go to Mirror's real, Edge. real quick, by the way, because uh, apparently the, the, the chat's now telling me that the that FIFA is in in the top sixteen right or sixteenth right now, which I'll concede that that it's not up there right now. I think during the day it's bigger because it's more of an international game. Uh, FIFA, is, of course, soccer is big in Europe. Yeah, so and I think FIFA that's why is really it's big not. Big in Europe, it's like not Madden a top game a right now in America. So yeah. it makes more sense that during the more European times, it's bigger. Like Madden is probably bigger during the night time. But uh, going back, like we get all about FIFA. Cool. I, I, I was like, okay, FIFA is probably gonna be a little bit more. I can respect that, especially like. They're finally adding the female teams. What is that? That's huge pretty cool. Step. Although, and I think when, that, that, this when that news came out, from... real quick, uh, the like that came out just around the same time as the the, the fi big FIFA uh, scandals with the you know the, the top officials oh, getting God. indicted. P FIFA fans were more were more concerned and upset about the fact that women were being added to the FIFA 15 than uh, than they were about the uh, investigations. Let's, let's not talk about just saying. Just saying. Just saying. But um, but 
going back to like, okay, we have 30 minutes of FIFA, and then finally it's like, yes, Mirror's Edge. Mm -hmm. They show one trailer, 10 minutes, go off, and we go to another 30 minutes of Sportsman Madden. Yeah. I think that's the this is big... This is proportional to the amount of money that they make on these games. I, I, of course, I believe that, but if they have their hand, it's like, it's, it's a gaming convention, and I get that the sport games are important for them and their money and everything, but you're mm -hmm. still at a convention with mostly gamers that come there for games they don't expect. Like, everybody knows we're going to get a new FIFA 16, and everybody knows we're getting a new Madden. Right, but it's also so, their opportunity to make sure that people know why they need to get this one in particular. Of course. Not necessarily they show, not to say that they necessarily sold it that well, but... I, w I will concede to Shadow, though, that as much as, you know, you build up hype with people, depending on what you put out on these conferences, honestly, the people, main people that they're having these conferences for are the people who are going to be their shareholders. Exactly. True. But I, I just think, overall, I think the biggest complaint on, like, shareholders are important for them as well, but at the other hand, with the integration with Twitch and stuff, I think that, and a lot of other conferences are seeing this it's like yes your shell or shareholders are important but you need to please your audience as well because your shareholders are not only going to watch at your press press conference anymore they're going to watch at what how people react on that as well mm -hmm. so and but like i think it's more i think that the sports would have been a bit less worse if it wasn't like the conference was like one and a half hours and an hour of that was three games and all three of them were sports. And the rest was, of course, like, Mass Effect, great. But yeah, there wasn't much to show for it. But Mirror's Edge is coming in February 2016. There's yeah. more to talk and to show than one trailer, right? I don't know. I, I mean, they still... You have to remember, February, that's that's another eight still, months from now. That's almost a year. Away, but I'm like... There could have been a little bit more. And the pay... Like, in... I think it's more just that the fact that indeed it was squeezed in between these big sections of FIFA and Madden. So I just feel the pacing in EA was, and it's going back to like the whole Yarny or the Unravel to uh, Garden Warfare part as well. It's like their pacing in their presentation was just not the best. Okay. They should have spread out the sport games a little bit more. I think they should have put them in a little bit more time in the other games, a little bit less in the sporting games, but that's just me not being a big sports fan, and I guess. That, that's the issue. We're not... I mean, even though I'm probably the biggest sports fan of the entire Zelda-thon, Fun for Freedom RNG circle, yeah. I, I still agree that they probably spent a little too much time on it, but it, it's still not even for necessarily my demographic. It's for the true sporty demographic and for the investors. Which, because they're also but, uh, very, I, I, very much looking forward to seeing more I, about I the latest installment. I think we should move on because we're one, yeah. one hour, 15 minutes in I and know, we still I have know. a lot to talk. Um, anything more else on the sports or the uh, Mirror's Edge? Uh, Mirror's Edge was cool. Yeah. We basically, was all cool. we saw was a trailer. It came so out one recently. Big thing, though, I want to talk about Mirror's Edge. Sure. It was mentioned the fact that um, guns will completely yep. will not be removed from the game just but you won't be able it. to use them. Yep. Which. I mean, some people always kind of complained about, uh, specifically with Mirror's Edge, the original had, they, it almost felt like shoehorned, the that the fact well, that there were, there were guns in there, but they existed. Actually, it was. Yeah. EA, EA actually, when they were making Mirror's Edge, EA was pretty much like, you're going to put guns in the game or we're not going to publish it. Sure. It's so, yes, it pretty much was, so I'm really happy that they're allowing this. Yeah, um, no, fair enough. That being said, the last thing in the A was, of course, Battlefront. Front. Yep. And Which they held overall, everyone hostage. I, and I with. think we should just <laughs> put all the Battlefront that they showed off in all conferences together because they showed a bit of an, at uh, Sony and I think a bit of PC as well. But uh, they had a lot of gameplay. They had like four, three or four missions over all media attentions. They showed off a lot of different environments. You'd be able to play Darth Vader versus Skywalker, playing as the Rebels, playing as the Stormtroopers. It looked really good. Yeah, I have it did. to admit, the gameplay looked good. It really looked true. A lot of gameplay, what was 
I think the biggest complaint till now, like, hey, we're getting Battlefront, but where's our gameplay? The gameplay looked good, so I'm saying, yeah, it's it's looking actually really good. I still need to wait. For me personally, I'm like, I I don't know if it's gonna be a day one per sitch, but. We'll see. One complaint that I saw a lot from people was that it was th th that the game, the quote unquote tra gameplay trailer that they showed was too scripted. Uh, that they, it wasn't necessarily genuine in showing what was going to have you happening well, during bit, actual but gameplay. Then the, f then the fact that they showed off like three or yeah. over different conferences, and even if they were scripted to look good on four different fronts, it's like, does it really matter anymore? Mm hmm. And to that effect, uh, you, you know, like, if you've ever played a Battlefield game, it, you it's pretty much the same thing, you, in terms of graphics and all that. It looks pretty darn similar. You were gonna say, Hipster? Yeah. I was gonna say, I, I'm curbing my enthusiasm on Battlefront, mm -hmm. because I've heard some things that um, kind of concern me a little bit, and that's okay. one that we're not going to have any Clone Wars content, is what I've heard. I, I've heard very specifically that it's going to be just the uh, the original trilogy, plus, yeah. you know, whatever at comes first, out for the new setup. At least. They say at first, yeah. we'll release with only the original con, because, of course, the focus isn't there with 7 coming out, like what right. Slowbook said. I want to play think my seven droid will there, <laughs> but We might see the Clone Wars at some point. We don't know, but it, it's entirely possible they add it later, like... The original Battlefront, like Battlefront 2 was I think the Clone Wars and Battlefront 1 was actually the original trilogy in the original two games, so... Right, but they, they very specifically came out and said, hey, we're, we're just doing the, the original trilogy. Like, that was, that was something that came up in a, in a conference. Also, I've for, heard that content release, yeah. might be a little bit lacking as far as maps and stuff. And, like, for now. I've heard some people try and justify that. It's like, it's a first-person shooter. If you have a few good maps, then that's really all you need. But I feel like part of the whole point well, of the, the Battlefield uh, games is that you can... A toy box. ...go and see all of the, you know, fight different battles throughout the series well, and fight we'll at all see. these different well, what, locations. Well, what I said, we've already seen like three to four different locations in the gameplay trailers now, so we know there's at least four and they look huge. No loading times, they look big, so we'll see. And there will be a single player mode, even though it will be more like challenges than actual story. Mm -hmm. Right. And a co-op mode. And a co-op mode, of course, but it, it, we're, we'll see. We'll we see. We will see. But, uh, right, that, that's all I, I was saying, is I'm just holding off my enthusiasm. I the current discussion points to Ubisoft. So. Ubisoft, yeah! Yeah, so they had a conference. <laughs> they started off. Uh,